next speaker is Ming Chung Lee, who's an assistant professor in the School of Architecture at the University of Texas uh, in Austin, and um, is uh, going to be, um, he teaches urban design and physical planning, and his talk is entitled Scenario Planning with GIS. And let's see, do you, uh, I have to, Oh, I did? Oh, yeah, there we go. Well, in fact, I, I just moved to uh, UNC Charlotte last summer. But uh -huh. before that, I did work at UT Austin. So. Yeah. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but do you uh, recognize which one of these is yours here? Uh, did I just, did I accidentally close it? Could be. Uh, the uh, number eight. Uh, I, didn't, I don't see the number eight here. So. Yeah, I don't see it either. Oh, I did. Hmm. Okay, well, let's see. Um, yeah, it should be in the folder. All right. I think I may have closed him out. Yeah, yeah no, oh, there he is. Good. Great. <clears throat> uh, it's a great honor to be here. Uh, I will just quickly introduce two regional planning projects uh, I've involved uh, in the past two years. And both projects incorporate GIS as a tool to assist in their scenario planning processes. But they are slightly different, so I will get, go into the detail later. But first, just a brief uh, background introduction. So I believe uh, you all already know what scenario planning is. But if you don't, just quickly, some quick highlight. So it's, it's, it's a planning method typically for long-term strategic planning, so it requires uh, decision maker to consider various factors uh, associated with the issue and incorporate different value, different views from stakeholders, and then allow them to quickly generate different scenarios looking into the future, and then they can start the trade off by comparing cause and effects. So it has been applied to many different cases, including uh, the long range land use and transportation planning, typically at a uh, regional scale. And it has recently become quite popular as a means to articulate, evaluate uh, more compact development alternatives uh, for future growth in some of uh, the major metropolitan areas in the U.S. Examples including uh, like Envision Utah, Chicago 2020 plan, also uh, Envision Central Texas, and more recently, uh, Imagine 2040 plan for the Triangle area in North Carolina. And U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, working with two other federal agencies, they launched a new regional planning grant program in 2009, and with a very uh, with a clean a clear recognition on the importance of using analytics and data. So the grant requires applicants to come up with different ways to, using, uh, to use uh, analytical tools and data to monitor performance and, and engage with citizens. Although they did not specify in their grant document, but they did recommend scenario planning can be used in the process. And some of uh, the grantees did listen, and one of them is in Central Texas, and another one is in Carolinas. Okay, so the first project uh, is called Connect Our Future and cover 14 counties across North and South Carolina. And this is a regional visioning process. So the goal is to come up with a shared vision to guide future growth in the region. So they work with uh, uh, a private consultant, uh, Seven Hills Town Planning, to develop a GIS model using community Viz. And the model allows them to conduct development uh, constraint analysis, also study uh, build out potentials with suitability analysis, and eventually allow them to allocate future growth to the region based on all these analysis. And also uh, extensive public outreach effort has been conducted all over the 14 county area um, in, in order to you know, increase citizen awareness of the project and also uh, collect input from uh, the residents and also local officials about how they envision the future of their region. 
and eventually all the public feedbacks along, along with some other data <coughs> uh, from some survey studies together enable them to come up with these four uh, scenario concepts representing four different uh, potential development patterns could, be, could take place in the next 30 years uh, for the region. So the next step is to use the GIS model to compare and evaluate all these four different scenario concepts based on indicator measurements, such as uh, look at the uh, urban footprint, look at loss of agricultural lands. And this is still ongoing process and uh, expect to be complete in the next few months. And the second project is called uh, Sustainable Places Project, cover five counties in central Texas. And unlike the previous one, uh, because central Texas already has a regional vision, which was done by uh, a previous scenario planning processes called Envision Central Texas. The process is complete, uh, was complete in 2004. And the process identified a preferred scenario, which uh, promote a more compact development, concentrate future growth within a number of activity centers around the, the region. So for this particular scenario planning process, they were looking at different ways to implement those development principles identified by the original vision. So they choose five cities, including uh, City Austin, but for City Austin, only one neighborhood. And other four cities, just small town, population range between 20,000 and 30,000. And they use these four areas for cities as their demonstration site to test out some of the implementation, implement, implementation strategies. Well, eventually they hope the idea can be applied to the whole region. And because the geographic scale is smaller, so uh, a different set of tools was, was needed and enable them to kind of uh, take a closer look at the uh, physical, environmental, and economic condition of the local uh, participa participating jurisdictions. And Envision Tomorrow, which is the tool, uh, originally developed by Frequentist Associate in cooperation with UD Austin, and was chosen to serve this purpose. So the tool allow them to quickly generate scenarios starting from buildings as opposed to parcels or, or grid cells used by other scenario planning tools. And the, the tool has been used in a number of public workshops for the five demonstration sites to allow uh, participants to quickly generate scenarios. At the same time, they can check on uh, indicator measurement on the fly. While, while they're working on the scenarios. And so finally, all the uh, 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 scenarios being synthesized together and, and generate three scenarios for each demonstration site. And, and you know, like one of the scenario is business as usual and two other more mixed use uh, type of development with different housing choice. And also, they also come up with uh, uh, the, all the different indicator measurement, including uh, demographic, uh, environmental impact, or physical impact. And eventually, all this information coming out from the scenario planning process, because it's on a finer geographic scale, uh, enable ur uh, urban planners, designers, to really look at physical design, the arrangement of all the physical components, housing, street, open space, or other amenities. So they can really think about place making, and they can do that with confidence based on sound economic, physical feasibility, and quality environmental protections. OK, so again, I know you all know scenario planning. But to me, uh, with its key focuses on um, systematic procedural approach, considerations of broader scale environmental factors, and also emphasis on um, performance assessment, public participation, 
and also promoting uh, alternative change for future-oriented outcome. I think all these characteristics together present a very clear example showing how geo design can be done. So finally, I just want to take a chance to acknowledge uh, our institutional and private sector uh, uh, partners. So for the Charlotte project, uh, uh, the Design and Society Research Center at the UNC Charlotte, and also Seven Hill Town Planning. And for the Austin Project, the, uh, the uh, Center for Sustainable Development at UD Austin, and also McKenna Adams Studio and Frequentist Associates. Thank you very much.